I want to talk today about facial symmetry and these biomechanics. And I think these biomechanics are not only helpful to symmetry, but they're at the core of how you become more symmetrical. The analogy I like to make these days is I grew up in New York and I used to watch the Macy's Day Parade, usually on TV because it was always cold and snow pepper and it's during Thanksgiving. And there was this one float of Kermit the Frog. And one year, I think he got deflated. Right. And, and something happened. Like, I think he, the balloon, so this float, these are massive floats going down, I think, Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. And it had deflated. And that deflated kind of Kermit is a lot of like, this is how I've envisioned like your body working, right? Like, there's some mechanic that, you know, like essentially we inflate, we inflate, we deflate. And with time, we deflate. When we deflate, it's a little bit like this deflated. Kermit the frog float. And when you want to inflate him, it's, you know, it's a huge float. You start pumping air in, you don't know what is going to inflate first, right? Like maybe it's going to be his head or his leg or his arm. Like if you've ever blown up one of those pool floats that has like many parts to it, it's the same thing. Like you're pumping air in in one place. What inflates is a little bit unpredictable and that's how i view the body working right like you do these biomechanics it inflates you what does it work on first like is it going to be your palate or is it going to be your skull or is it going to be your arms i've never been able to predict this right now i almost view it as like random first let's talk a little bit more about this deflated state so this deflated state is basically when the curve b flattens skull deflates in deranges the cranial bones, creating more asymmetry, compressing the brain, causing potentially neurological and cognitive issues. And your whole skeleton deflates because the soft tissue that's covering your body is kind of like this wetsuit, you know, that like crushes in on you, right? Why is this happening? Is it because of age or what you eat or how much exercise? In my view, no. I view those things as being very tertiary to what actually causes this whole thing to deflate. And that is these biomechanics that I talk about, which are reflected in the curve of speed. And I essentially don't think aging exists, right? And, and if it does, like somehow I'm reversing everything that I associate to aging. And I think that we get disease and die because of this deflating process and not because there's some pre-programmed aging process. And when we inflate, doing revive, having a mouth guard, doing the stretches that I talk about, everything remodels over time, right? So your skull is kind of inflating out. The cranial bones now have room to push outwards and go back into their correct position, which creates better symmetry of the face. And the same thing happens with your body and your body starts to unwind and look more symmetrical as well. And you know that it's the physics of inflating how? Because I, for example, when I do my stretches and things every day, I am ripping through skin right so i don't know if you can tell right here but like this has all ripped if i shave my head right now it's ripped if you saw right here it's ripped right and that's just from today like it will heal by you know overnight and i won't have any rips in the morning when i wake up and then i'll do more stretching and it'll rip again i'm scratching the back of my head right now because it rips it rips because you're inflating and this whole thing is inflating right through the skin i think that the ripping shows you, and, and the ripping doesn't just happen on the body. Like it, I can tell like my fingers have inflated, lots of things have inflated. So you can essentially logically deduce the fact that there's some kind of inflating process to these biomechanics. And the fact that like everything functionally is improving, including your facial symmetry, you can deduce the other things that I'm deducing, that this is essentially like reversing aging process. The other thing I want to say is it's very hard to predict, you know, like like the float analogy I gave the beginning, it's very it's very hard to predict how long this is going to take and what's going to correct when, right? And and it doesn't happen at some even pace. You might be getting, like, some people are really frustrated because they see other people in the community that are getting really fast results in the first few weeks. And for them, it's really slow for a very long time. But then, if they stick with it, what often happens is, like, they make these leaps forward. So it's very non-linear improvement, right? It's not like more time, you just improve like this. Like, that's not how it works. It, like, it works more like... You might be flat for a while and then you leap and you're flat for a while and you leap. That's kind of how I experienced it, especially in terms of aesthetics, right? Like I view it a little bit like a sailboat that has tipped over. It's hard to push that sailboat up, 
right? It's heavy. It has like a wing in the water, right? So to push it up, it's going to be extremely hard until you hit to some point. And then the sailboat's just going to correct itself really fast at the end. And that is how I've kind of experienced how these biomechanics work on the body is how like you're kind of like pushing, seeing very little progress. And then boom, one day, like boom, something just snaps back into place and you're like, wow, what just happened? And I think a lot of people have described these type of events during the process. The other thing to take away from this is that I think if you do this process long enough and you keep inflating, we go to our genetic potential. And in my view, our genetic potential is we were all designed with perfection. Right? Like we were designed to be perfectly symmetrical with a perfect body, a perfect, almost model-like skull, perfect occlusion. There is no genetics, you know, there's, there's no DNA for like asymmetry. So I think like you keep going with this process and logically, I think everybody, almost regardless of age, regardless of genetics, hits perfection, which is probably perfect body, perfect face, per perfect symmetry. And I think that's going to completely blow the world away. Like you could be 80 years old, you know, you're falling apart and then you do this process and you'll figure 30 again in, you know, five years, after five years of work. I think that they're going to figure out that that is possible. And that's crazy. To wrap up, I want to point out at the end, like you cannot really cheat this process. Like surgery and Botox and palate expanders, they're all to me examples of trying to cheat these biomechanics and it does not work. Just a little recently, I saw a picture of Pamela Anderson and she's had all this like work done. I think she's in her late fifties and she looks absolutely horrible. And she was like a woman, like when we, you know, I, I grew up with her in my generation, she was on Baywatch and she was beautiful, like top 0.1% of beauty in America. And now, you know, she probably looks worse than at least half the women her age in America. And why? Because she tinkered all this with like surgery and Botox and this and that. And what you realize with these biomechanics, our bodies were designed very smartly to be able to resurrect on their own. But things move very easily. So if you decide that you're going to do surgery, you're going to put this exactly there. Well, like this whole thing is like a balloon that inflates and deflates. So like if you put that exactly there with your surgery, like it's going to move and maybe two years from now, it's going to look very bad. And that is like a perfect example of why Pamela Anderson's face looks so weird now. Because you cannot do that. And this is why pretty much everyone that does plastic surgery five, ten years on is going to look weird. Because things are going to continue to move because of these biomechanics. And so don't try to cheat the process. Just do it the right way. It's going to take time, but you're going to improve the entire way. Thanks.